All right, welcome. All right, here we go. Um, I'm gonna take a peek at this right here. Uh, one of, if not my favorite, comic book artists slash creators, uh, Alan Davis. Um, this particular omnibus is Excalibur Volume 1. Um, I will also have a video, separate video, for uh, Omnibus Volume 2 of Excalibur, uh, specifically looking at the works of Alan Davis in it. Um, there are also issues and um, Marvel Comic Presents stories in these by, you know, uh, Rick Leonardi, Eric Larson, uh, Joe Moderera, creators like that. Um, but yeah, again, specifically, this is specifically about Alan uh, huge Alan Davis fan. I'm just going to get to it. There's going to be kind of, uh, there's a lot of material here, so I don't want to keep everyone around for too long. We're just going to kind of do a quick peek. And then uh, I might do a live video at some point, uh, looking more in depth at all the pieces in particular. But for now, just a peek through for anyone interested in this, in this collection, or in Alan Davis in general, uh, being the master with the pencil that he is. Uh, cool piece, I've always loved this piece of art right here. Um, this book, when I was a kid, the Six Caliber one shot here, I think there was two or three different editions of it. Uh, it did also have second printings, but one of the things was the comic shops that I was around growing up, they never had it in stock. Um, I, did, I did end up having to order it from, I think it was like American Comics, or so, it was something out of another comic magazine. Uh, to actually obtain a copy of this particular one shot, which was like uh, the origin of the Excalibur as a team um, by Alan Davis. Chris Claremont wrote it. <clears throat> but uh, awesome book. We're going to start taking a peek through this. But yeah, I do remember, I love this double pager here. Um, just how cool and different uh, his work was to me at the time as a, uh, a young aspiring artist. And uh, stuck with me ever since. Um, I probably own 75% of what Alan Davis has, uh, has in print. So Several long boxes of Alan's work. Yeah, this was great. Um, really nice, too, for a, for a uh, oversized... Um, one shot too at the time everything was like flat colors this and that and uh this here was more in the vein of like uh you know electra lives again or as for, with the coloring styling that is um you know dark knight returns i think it was 1987 or 88 when this came out 1988 um alan you know great take on all the characters of course great storytelling Panels like this, um, <clears throat> pretty much where I learned how to draw uh, profile shots of characters. Uh, he also did this thing here too, where I don't I don't know what you would even call this shot, but it's where a character's head is turned in a way where you kind of see a little bit of the cheekbone and just sort of like the tip of the nose and a little bit of the protrusion of um, the chin and the mouth. Um, he does this pretty often actually. And uh, so that's another place that I kind of learned how to do shots like that. Yeah, great artwork. Um, the scale of his characters is awesome. It's got a lot of variety. Here's another one of those shots where it's not necessarily a profile. It's more of kind of a more of a turned head <clears throat> turning towards the background characters. It's been raining here for like three days, so my allergies are acting up a little bit. Sorry about that. You get our first uh, view of the team. Uh, I think they're called the Technet. But again, uh, I highly recommend everyone uh, pick this up or pick up the singles and read them. Uh, Alan didn't stick with the book a great um, uh, deal of time. He was with uh, this one shot here. Uh, the I think these were called the War Wolves. War Wolves, yeah. Um, 
man, what a great shot. Like these, these, uh, middle to small character panels, uh, are just handled so well. Just really beautiful artwork. Uh, great shading, great, great sense of, uh, lighting and, and atmosphere on all of this. Got Nightcrawler uh, <laughs> dressed like a, pretty much like a weekend fisherman there. Um, man, yeah, this stuff's just it's so cool. Yeah, Alan stuck with the book. I think it was uh, the special, and he got a little bit of a jump on the uh, ongoing series, and I think he was only with it up through like issue eight or nine. And then I'm going to start skipping some pages here. I just realized this thing's going to be going for a while. Um, yeah, back cover here. Character not introduced yet, but the back cover here, kind of you get the, this is Excalibur. This is your, your core team, right? Kitty Pride, Nightcrawler, uh, Rachel, Phoenix, uh, Megan, sister of uh, Captain Britain here. Um, but uh, Widget. And so this was the back cover of this one shot. Several versions. You got versions with UPCs. You got some direct market versions of it, and then different price point versions as well. So that was kind of kind of weird, not really knowing which version of the book you had. Um, and then here's the ongoing, uh, very popular cover. Uh, I was commissioned to do an homage to this piece actually, not too long ago, of uh, someone else's IP. But yeah, great, great art. Let's focus on that art. And I would definitely say in the uh, in the X office, this was definitely the the lighter, more not really comedy relief. It was just a lighter book. Um, you do get to see their. Uh, this is great too. This is so awesome. Um, and Alan did a couple of. Uh, annuals, I, so New Mutants Annual would be one of them. I highly recommend that book as well. And then the Uncanny X-Men Annual, I don't recall which number it is. It's, I, it, it's, I don't know, because Art Adams did a couple in between there too. So it's up around, between like issues, uh, annuals 9 and maybe 12 or 13. He might have done one or two. I know one for sure. Uh, it's the cover with Wolverine uh, getting choked out on the cover. But uh, that's a great, great book, too. Um, yeah, this stuff's always super inspiring for me, uh, going through it and just really seeing uh, uh, where the tug and pull on some of these shots that he pulls off. Um, you don't see a lot of artists doing it today. Super, super uh, professional uh, kind of traditional, you know, he, he did a lot of stuff over, um, lives, where is it, over in England, right? So, uh, did a lot of stuff with Alan Moore previous to this, um, Miracle Man, and then also did a Captain Britain series over there, but I feel like this right here is when he cultivated this, the specific art style that he, he still runs with even today, 2020. For, uh, he still I, he hasn't really changed much. Um, still super consistent. Um, I think his rendering has leveled up a bit, but uh, this stuff's great. Like this stuff would still hold up today. If this was coming out uh, today, with you know had, having him had stopped where he's at here, I would still be picking this up because it's so good. Um, Excalibur had something else going for it too. Back cover art. He always produced a back cover pinup on every issue so it was almost like a gallery on the outside of the book so uh, this is the back cover to issue one here great illustration of uh, Phoenix it's issue two and again like I said you know it's it's more of the lighter light-hearted like comedy almost it's like uh, what have you done with Kitty and then you got this uh, war wolf here was obviously just had uh, eaten somebody right um, even back in the day, it was kind of like weird, goofy, but cool because it was drawn really well. So, And 
And then later on, uh, they utilize uh, this character Widget here, which basically looks like a, a robot Kermit the Frog head almost. Um, he basically becomes a portal. Um, and later on in Volume 2, ends up becoming an actual like entity character uh, with a body and all. Uh, he's kind of like... Uh, uh, what was his name? Warlock from New Mutants. Kind of the same idea. Like, uh, you know, Star Wars has R2-D2, Excalibur had Widget. A lot of character said by no words at all, you know, with just uh, their presence alone. So, yeah, I'm going to start skipping some stuff here. But this, these are the earlier issues. Uh, let's see, yeah, this is still issue two. Uh, always love this panel here. This powerful punch just crushes this werewolf. And you get to see uh, the dynamics here of the tussle, and uh, or actually it's right here. This is a different. This is a uh, phoenix um, nightcrawler here tussling with it, uh, almost like a circus acrobatic kick, which is. You know, in his wheelhouse, and then uh, Captain Britain coming in with that right, you know. Uh, back cover artwork here, issue two. Of course, uh, Juggernauts here, issue three. Um, Excalibur also for the X-Men universe um, it was the only one really at this time delving into like alternate timelines and like bringing that into the fold with the team so alternate versions of the team members alternate versions of the villains and she's getting big uh, Megan uh, she's She's uh, like a shapeshifter. I think I said this. It's, 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 she's not. She's not Captain Britain's sister. Uh, Psylocke is is a sister. So retract that. <laughs> I was thinking of Psylocke. But yeah, Megan is the love interest to Captain Britain. That'd be kind of weird. It's not. It's not the sister. Uh, but anyways, yeah, her thing is she can like shapeshift into pretty much everything. She's kind of like a. Uh, I don't even know what you would call it. Like fairy sort of. And by mood, too, she becomes different things. Like, if she's feeling down about herself, you'll see her become more of, like, a swamp creature-esque, you know? Here you go. You can see some alternate reality versions meeting up. Almost uh, mirroring the story. And that's sometimes if one is kind of delving into looking into other dimensions, the other one is also doing the same backwards compatible, so they end up uh, linking up. I love this is my favorite back cover right here. Uh, this Nightcrawler pinup, so good. Uh, but yeah, Alan, Alan's work um, inspired a lot of other comic book artists. Uh, I know early on, uh, even through the Uncanny X Men issues, uh, Joe Moderera was heavily, heavily inspired by uh, Alan Davis's rendering style. Um, I would say he almost only used Alan's rendering style with the fades and. The way he was dropping uh, uh, these black with the fades and uh, even his hatching style. Um, although his underdrawing was um, more in line with Alan Davis or with uh, Arthur Adams. Um, he was using Alan Davis's uh, rendering style for sure. Very prominent. And then later on you had artists like um, Brian Hitch coming out. Uh, with their own versions of an Alan Davis style. But early Brian Hitch was just uh, straight up aping Alan. So, yeah, again, I highly, re again, you know, I can't recommend these enough. Um, these early issues of Excalibur, even if you don't, if you don't got the scroll for the, uh, the Omnis, uh, the single issues are super attainable and uh, not too pricey. It's a cool back cover, too. And most of these back covers are—they're almost like uh, commission level, where where they um, 
they don't really apply to the actual book, you know? They're just sort of like a one-off, like a Marvel fanfare gallery uh, sort of idea. Um, this cover reminds... I think it's because of the skewed um, angle. Everything is kind of catty-corner cut. Um, this reminds me a lot of a Joker cover that Alan did um, on Detective Comics. So it would be like Joker in the driver's seat, and then you have like Batman and uh, Catwoman back here. Very similar. Start skipping some stuff here. I'm not even a quarter through this book. Um... Yeah, again, more of these characters where it's alternate versions of them. And most of the time, they're evil versions, too. Let's see, next up, Goblin Knight. Let's see, I feel like I'm missing something here. Let's see something. <clears throat> here we go. This is the cover to issue six. Super creepy, especially with this uh, zombified version of Kitty. Super creepy. Yeah, so this this stuff right here kind of comes into play right before, uh, I think it is the Inferno storyline that went across all the X titles. Yeah, I think it plays. I think it plays right into it. It might actually be part of it. I didn't look at the top of the book to see. Um, so, such a cool design right here. It's almost like a, a Black Queen version of, uh, but Megan instead of, um, Madeline Pryor, Jean Grey, whoever it was back then. Yeah, and this whole thing is, like, affecting all the characters very weirdly. Like, uh, you even get a petrified version here of, uh, of Phoenix there. Um, obviously through Inferno, everything was coming alive, you know, buildings, cars, mailboxes, and so you get a little bit of that here. This, this, uh, cop car coming at Captain Britain, and he just demolishes it. Yeah, these pages are so fun. Uh, cool back cover here. This is my favorite cover. For Excalibur here, uh, Excalibur issue seven, the wraparound cover. Um, it's just the most aesthetically pleasing cover to me. I just love everything about it. I really wish it was a poster at some point. You get this weird demon here falling in love with it. She's almost like a mannequin. She she's fully aware. She just can't move. If I remember right, you see the Phoenix Force here in her eye. Trying to break the mold. Get this weird thing here between Captain Britain and Kitty where uh, he becomes this strange, almost like a commando mixed with Freddy Krueger sort of sort of a character here. Eighties eighties slasher aesthetic right here. Stuff's fun. I'm not skipping many pages in this issue because I love this book. Some of the other ones I will, though. Um, I think pretty soon here um, you're going to get to the fill-in issues. Oh, God, I hate this book so much. Okay, so like eight, Ron Lim, no thank you. We're going to skip this. Get out of here. Terrible issue. Issue nine, Alan Davis comes back. Okay, so you had one fill-in issue, so one through seven. Plus a special fully Allen. Allen's back on nine. Yeah, they had some terrible choices on Excalibur with um, these fill in artists. Um, you had this guy, uh, Wozniak, that came in for a little bit too. Just complete eyesore. Um, you got alternate reality versions. Nightcrawler, he looks, he looks hella dope right there. I really like the way he looks. Yeah, you get a little bit of this danger room kind of sequence thing going on. I think I might be wrong about this. I feel like this stuff here is happening. Uh, the X-Men are like, I think 
through Gateway. They're in some other dimension or something at this time. Um, but time -wise, timeline wise, this stuff does line up to the Uncanny X Men storyline. So it was intertwined a bit. Yeah, because there's the uh, Blackbird. Yeah, this stuff's great, though. Um, let's see. Let's go ahead and get through here. Okay, so he's only back for that issue 9. And then, uh, uh, unfortunately, and I always thought this was super lame, you get this face-off of Captain Britain. Captain Britain and then the uh, this other version of Captain Britain here. Um, back cover artwork by Alan. Hella dope uh, gate crasher there. It's just, it's so stoic. I, I would love to own this original, this one here. So yeah, you get this face off. And I remember as a kid seeing this and I was like, oh my God, fine. You know, what a, like next issue, I can't wait. And then they give you this. Um, nothing against Marshall Rogers. Uh, Marshall Rogers came in and did the uh, later, you know, this is later in his career. So uh, one of my favorite Batman artists of all time, uh, however, didn't really do the job for me here on Excalibur. It just, just felt super lame. I'm going to skip these. Not a fan. Uh, and this Omni, after this, I think it goes into that Art Adams, uh, the Mojo Mayhem book. We're going to skip that as well. Um, I'll do another video for Art Adams um, later. Unless I already did one. I don't recall. Uh, great artwork, but... We are here for Alan. Okay, yeah, so then it skips back, so we get issue 12. That's the back cover by Art. Uh, beginning of the Cross Time Caper, part one of nine. If I remember right, this actually goes for 13 or 14 books, not nine. So I think they probably just had to nail down a run, and then it, it expanded from there, you know. Monthly comics, that, that was pretty common, though. Stuff didn't really stick to what it was supposed to. It would either end early or it would segue to something else. God, this stuff's cool. And at the time, Excalibur was utilizing this train. It was kind of like their uh, the device, kind of like their DeLorean, you know, but uh, going into alternate timelines or realities or whatnot. Uh, powered by a uh, pretty much like an adult version of like Lockheed here, uh, Kitty Pride's Dragon. Uh, it's just this giant version of, of Lockheed almost. So and I haven't read these things in years. I just I really just when I come back to this stuff, I look at the artwork just because. But yeah, Alan he does such a good job too with these. Uh, these trolls and these, you know, these weird kind of characters like this guy. Um, just really has it down packed. There's some that Europe, European artists in general do really good with fantasy characters, you know. Uh, so, also very cool. Uh, what's her name? Saturn 9 or something like that. Uh, cool pin up there. It's a back cover to this issue. Uh, goes to issue 13. I think he sticks with the book for one or two more issues. I'm going to skip some pages here. Uh, but yeah, it's like they, they go kind of hard with the tech knit there um, as a villainous group. Uh, yeah, 14 wraparound cover. For some reason, I ended up with five or six copies of this specific issue, and I don't know why. Uh, but I know that in my uh, in my long boxes I have a bunch of copies of it. Um, I used to have subscription service to this, X Factor, and Uncanny X Men. Those were my three subscriptions uh, through Marvel mail order uh, service. So it was like Excalibur would show up, uh, Uncanny X Men, and then of course Walt Simonson on X Factor, and um, those were all just beater copies. Um, I would still buy duplicates from my shop, but those were ones that went straight into you know uh, into bags and boards. Uh, I was that collector that I would always have a reader copy and also have a um, 
a collector cop, you know, something that I was like, oh, this... Because to me, they're worth they're worth their weight in gold. I, I, love, I love these books so much. Okay, so issue 15. I uh, get more with the Technet. Did that one have a back cover? You know what's weird? Oh, because it was a wraparound cover, huh? Yeah, all right. So no back cover on this because it was a wraparound. Uh, let's see, 15. Scroll through here. Trying to keep this video under an hour. Uh, around here is when we start hitting a little more of that um, John Carter from, well, which is funny. He does an homage to Frazetta here for this cover. Uh, but yeah, Warlord of, yeah, it, it, this does feel like a John, uh, John Carter uh, story with the, uh, the creatures and the aliens and the aesthetic of the armor and everything else. So, yeah, but super sick. Awesome, awesome. Uh, first time you get to see Excalibur uh, visiting a little more adult-themed story, so I think I feel like the book was growing a little bit with the readers. Uh, issue 17, that is also Alan. Did he do, you know, I don't remember. This issue might have been the first one that he did not have a back cover. So, 16, okay. 17, let's go and skip through this. Again, very, very much... John Carter uh, influenced. They barely miss. They're they're zapping out of here, and they barely miss it. There's Xavier with the Star Jammer, so they did not get to meet up with them. Uh, huge letdown right here. Okay, so 17 Alan Davis end. All right, 18. We have a run of books here. No thanks. Yeah, I think Lim Wozniak. You got a Rick Leonardi issue that's subpar. Leonardi. Terrible coloring. All right, I'm going to get through this. Uh, yeah, I think Davis comes back around issue 20, 21, maybe. <clears throat> yeah, this was that Chris Wozniak artist. For some reason, I think because he was so young, there was a lot of hype around this this artist and uh they just didn't really uh, live up to it um they were like the uh they were the greg jeffries of comics I, I guess you could say a lot of hype uh also was Nyak here um i feel like they were working with liefeld at some point on something but not sure i've heard stories uh not enough to stick, though. Okay, so Davis is back here. I recognize these faces. Let's see. What issue is this? 21? 23. I was wrong. So 23, 23 and 24, and that's it for Alan, right? So pretty good run of books. Um, what's weird is these, these issues is a huge level up on the art, too, um, with the rendering. Uh, Possibly, he, he may have had a lot more time to work on these two. That might have been what it was. Uh, a lot of the hatching and just a lot of the shading is just really, really nice compared to the last couple cross-time caper books that he did. Um, so yeah, 23, 24. I think this is his final... I feel like this is his final book uh, until later on. Uh, I think he comes back around issue 40-something, 40 42. So you have like a two-year absence of, of Davis. Um, I think he's... I think this is supposed to be John Byrne right here. It is. He's got a B. So it's this weird alternate reality. He just kind of brings him in this the mix. It's so weird. I don't know why. I don't know if there's some weird beef or what's going on there. All right, so. All right, we get through this. <laughs> this is fucking huge. All right, we're going to get through here. Let's do this. Uh, Intergalactus. After this, uh, you know, Eric Larson, some other artists take over. Uh, that's Wozniak there. Pretty sure Larson comes in later. 
Uh, some wrong limb. No, thank you. Throw it away. All right. Uh, let's get through these. It is nice as, as far as uh, story-wise. You do need to read this stuff just to keep context to kind of what occurs within the Excalibur universe um, and where the characters, uh, where their direction is. But this isn't too bad. You got Ron Wagner here. Um, but um, I don't really care for it just because it's not Alan. Let's see. Yeah, this is a Eric Larson story here. He did a run of stories in Marvel Comics Presents, and I think that these are all collected there. Yeah, he did these weird Technic versions of like the Looney Tunes stuff. Um, that's uh, skippable. Let's get through this. Like I said, even the the Leonardi stuff is is uh, not not the, his best work. Um, okay, so that might have actually been at twenty. Three twenty-four. So I guess in the following omnibus, um, uh, Alan Davis return uh, for a nice chunk of books. All right. So in the back here, uh, Excalibur omnibus one. Oh, and by the way, this cover. Well, I'll show you the cover at the end here. Um, so Marvel Age sixty, nice cover piece here. Uh, this was also used as a promotional piece. Um, I got several copies of them. I did manage to get them signed by Alan. Um, but yeah, so I, th I think this is like a first appearance, right? Excalibur team. Uh, I get to see some of the in the inner workings. You get some recolored panels here. <clears throat> of that stuff. Uh, promo artwork. I've seen this as a poster, but I'm not sure if it's official. Uh, character designs of uh, Gatecrasher and the Technet. Um, interesting characters. Super interesting. I think a few of them were made into action figures in the 90s. Uh, this is the poster that I have several copies of. Uh, this was also a uh, direct market uh, promo poster, which I've seen, uh, which was also used as the cover to that uh, the special that precedes the ongoing. Um, this was another one. This is a cover to Amazing Heroes, old school magazine. Uh, cool piece. I, I, I feel like this should be remastered and used again for something. Awesome poster. Uh, never owned it. Uh, great illustration. Nice old school colors. Um, really beautiful piece. I might seek it out someday. Uh, this is a second printing, I think. I think that this here is not on the original. The sword is drawn. So I think the second printings, or maybe third or fourth, they went to print several times. Um, I think they added this to it. Everything else is the same, though. Uh, Captain Britain. I don't think this is Alan's work. This is here, but I'm not sure about this. Um, let's see here. Uh, these headshots are absolutely Alan Davis. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, Alan's work. Yes, that's Alan's work. Saturnine. Uh... All three versions, yes. Uh, yes, absolutely, Alan's work. This is a cool lineup here. You get to see the size and scale of all these characters here in the Technet. Uh, this, is a this is a redrawn. The same shot on the back cover, but I think this is redrawn. It's just a different drawing of it. Um, maybe? I think it is. <laughs> see, yeah, they're really pumping the... Like, hey, everyone, get on board. Wozniak's the next uh, hot thing. Uh, let's see. You got a Mark Silvestri pinup. Love me some Mark. Uh, trading cards. Marvel Vo Series 1 trading cards. I think I have the whole set of these. Uh, Alan Davis. Or no, it's Arthur Adams. Um, Davis might have done... No, it's not. Okay, so it's... Uh, Bagley, Tom Morgan, Art Adams, and Paul Mouse. So Art Adams only did this one. The rest, I'm assuming, then, are uh, Bagley. Uh, Knights of the Pendragon. Um, these were available here in the States, too. Marvel UK was a thing. Early 89, 90, or whatnot. But Alan Davis did these covers. 
And then you had a copycat Alan Davis artist, Brian Hitch, I think, doing the interiors. There's another cover piece. And this isn't all of them. He actually did all the covers for the Knights of the Pendragon series, and they're all equally awesome. <clears throat> this was a trade paperback cover, I thought. Oh, it's the cover to 125. That's weird that they put it in this omnibus. They must not have been sure whether or not they were going to do a second omnibus, because uh, technically this should have gone in either two or three, if they were not very sure. Uh, he homaged himself, homaged himself. Uh, this character here is one of the clandestine characters, uh, a family he created. Uh, got to see some artwork here, some black and white Allen works. So this is cool. I really wish there was a artist edition Alan Davis book. I wish it hard, man. Wish it hard. Uh, so much cool work of his, you know, from back in the day, even like uh, Detective Comics, or um, he had some other uh, books, you know, the uh, Blood and Guts Wolverine one shot, uh, the New Mutants Annual, uh, the Uncanny X Men Annual. He's done a ton of stuff. A lot of Infinity Gauntlet, some Thanos stuff. Um, let's see, this is a remaster color. I do like this. I, I don't feel like it was overworked, but remaster colors of uh, issue one. Here's a remaster colors of uh, Mojo Mayhem. This is a remaster colors of that wraparound cover, uh, issue 14. It looks like they used it for a trade paperback cover. Here's another version of it where they only colored the front. Don't know who did that. Oh, God, Ron Lim. That's why I don't like it. All right, so anyways, um, yeah, there you go. A nice little collection here, Volume 1. Uh, this is not the only cover, though. I think this was the... I think this is the harder-to-find variant cover to this. Uh, this is a direct market exclusive, I think. So comic shops, you'd be able to get this or... Um, and I don't... Honestly, I don't recall the other cover... Um, and then of course this is volume two right here, which I'll do a, I'll do a separate video on volume two. Uh, this one, like I said, I think it has, uh, it's got like a dozen books by Alan. Um, this one's a must. This one, uh, I wouldn't call it an afterthought because there's actually really good artwork. Um, uh, this is his return here, 42, I think it is, um, all the way up through, uh, where they reintroduce uh, the Jim Lee version of Psylocke, who is uh, technically it's it's uh, still Captain Britain's sister, just psyche wise, right? Uh, and then Ellen's, I think he exits around here too. So this might actually be the complete. Um, I'm gonna have to go through and look at the actual uh, chronology to see. But um, yeah, like all of these books here, um, great great artwork in them. Uh, so yeah, I'd say yeah, it's probably got. 10 to 15 issues of Alan in here. Um, but this is the core one that I, you know, highly recommend. Check it out. Uh, thanks for sticking with me through this. 38 minutes. 38 minutes. All right, guys.